In this video, we're going to take a look at a great new feature in Microsoft Teams called Content from Camera. It allows us to share documents, such as a textbook or some document that I might be working on. It allows us to share a whiteboard, and it allows us to share live video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my hardware to work with this feature, and then I'll show you how to share a book, I'll show you how to share a whiteboard, and I'll show you how to share live video. Now this content from camera feature will work with the built-in camera on your device, such as the camera that's built into my Surface here. But in my case, I set up this little rig here where I can point it down at the document that I want to share. I can even point it back at the whiteboard that I want to share. And as I demonstrate those features, it'll make a lot more sense. What I did here is I took a tripod and then I took this little articulated arm and then I took a clamp and then I clamped a Logitech web camera facing down on the document that I want to share. And I can just easily swing this around so that it's pointing to the whiteboard that I want to share as well. Or I could use this as live video for a different part of the room. And yes, this is a picture of me with MacGyver. And those of you who know who MacGyver is, you know why the picture is there. And those of you who don't know who MacGyver is, go look it up on the internet. It's a great place. Now, this webcam doesn't have to be a webcam, by the way. I can also get a little clamp and I could use this with my iPhone. So I can actually use my iPhone as a remote camera as well. So I could use that as a way of connecting up. And then when I'm in Microsoft Teams, it'll recognize that I have multiple cameras on my system. So when I go in to share the document, the whiteboard, or the live video, I'm going to be able to choose which camera I want to use in order to do that. I suppose if you want to get super fancy, you could have multiple remote cameras, but I'm not sure if your school board will have the budget for that. Anyhow, let's take a look at first sharing a document. And there are a couple of gotchas with that. What we need to do is we need to make sure that we set up that remote camera first in the software, then we'll launch the Teams meeting and use the remote camera then. So there's a two-step process. One, set it up in the operating system, to use it within Microsoft Teams. Let's go have a look at how that's going to work. Before I do anything with Teams, I first want to go into my camera application. And I want to set up this remote camera, in my case, a Logitech Brio. Now, if you don't have that show up, if you click on the camera, you'll cycle through the cameras. So if I go through, you can see if I click on here, It'll be my smiling face in a moment. So you can see that this is my Surface camera. You can see behind me, this is some of the equipment that faces me in the studio. And come back to the Logitech camera. Now this Logitech camera is not set up for me and I'm not going to be able to make these adjustments within Microsoft Teams. So I want to adjust everything before I use it in Teams. So first of all, I'm going to scroll in a little bit or zoom in a little bit just so that the camera is facing my book and then I can either move the book or I can move the camera a little bit just to make sure that it's capturing all of the two pages of this book. So I just zoom in a little bit and don't worry too much about the edges because the feature within Microsoft Teams will actually find the frame around this document, but I like to set it up. Now here's a real gotcha, especially with some cameras. If you go in, you'll notice it's currently set up to autofocus. What will happen is it'll constantly give me this sort of, as if I move around on the page, as you know, if I'm pointing stuff out to students and stuff, it'll kind of try to focus and it'll, it'll get, you'll get a little nauseous of that. So what I do is I set the focus just to 1%. You'll notice everything's in focus, but the camera's not going to adjust to try to autofocus. And now I've got this camera set up. I'm ready to go for the uh, Microsoft Teams. Now, if I go into Microsoft Teams, so we'll just pop into Microsoft Teams, and let's say I have this meeting in my Outdoor Adventure Club, so we'll start a new meeting. The first thing you're going to see is that it's going to use the front camera from the Surface as my camera device. I can go in here and I can change that, right? And I'm just going to close this camera. Well, I'll leave the camera open. So you can see it's got the front camera. The audio might not sync up perfectly here, folks, but, but you'll get the idea. So underneath here, you'll see that the microphone is coming from the Logitech. I don't really need audio in this case, so I'll just kill the audio there. Okay, so here's my meeting, and what I can do is I'll go in here, and that's my setup here. We got everything ready to go, and I will now join this meeting. It's now creating the meeting, and you can see within this, oh, horrible picture. You can see the meeting here. There I am again. You can see 
part of my studio in there. I can copy the link, all the things you'd expect. So now when I go in, if I go to sharing, this is where we'll see this new content from camera. And when I go in, you can see I can share from a whiteboard. I'll show you that in a few moments. I can share from a document. That's what I'm going to show you now. And I can share a live video. So let's start with a document. So now when I go to share a document, it's going to give me this notice, you know, put the document in view of the camera. I've got it. So I'll put that there. And notice it'll now look for the document. And you can see I've got this green frame around this document. So now I can share it. And this document will now be shared with my audience. And now I could go in and I could talk to students and I could point things out to them and they can see that. This will be part of my recording if it's in there. This is really handy if I've got code in here that I want to talk about. Now, students themselves can actually take this video when it's done and they can zoom in and zoom out. They have some control over what they're seeing so they can increase the size of their screen and such. Uh, obviously, you want to practice with this and you don't want really small small text in there. You might want to zoom in a little bit more. But again, you'll notice there's no zoom controls here. So I'm going to have to do that within Windows if I want to zoom in more or less. But it's a great way if you have documents there to share the documents, maybe maps if this is the outdoor club. And now I'm sharing that. And that's recorded in the meeting as well. So if I do any type of recording here, so if I go in and I say let's record the meeting, so I'll record the meeting. I can talk about what's happening here. Notice I could switch cameras if I had a document in another location. So I have all the cameras that are part of this operating system, including both physical cameras and virtual cameras. Um, I can also go in here and if there's a presenter here, I can overlay the presenter in there. That's not applicable. You'll see in the whiteboard that's more applicable. You can even rotate the document if you'd like to as well. So I've reconfigured my remote camera a little bit. Now, instead of pointing at a document, I have it pointing at a whiteboard. This is great for remote teaching. So if I'm doing something like this where I'm remote teaching, you'll see how I can use the whiteboard. But it's also great for in-class teaching. Nowadays, we want to make sure that we're engaging students. Maybe they're at home, they're not feeling well, but they can still come in through a remote session. I could have this camera at the back of the room by the projector, and it could be showing what's at the front of the classroom, and I could use this share content from camera feature to include students both in the class and outside of the class coming in remotely. Let's have a look at this. Once again, the key before using this in a Teams meeting is to go to my camera app on my operating system, make sure that I'm connected up to this camera that's pointed at the whiteboard, and make sure that, you know, the majority of the whiteboard is here. I can make, you know, some minor adjustments here. I want to just make sure, again, it does not have to be perfect, but I do want to make sure that whatever camera I'm using can capture the edges of this whiteboard. This is going to be quite nice because it's an external camera dedicated to the task of pointing at the whiteboard, but this could just as easily be the front-facing camera on my Surface. So now that I've got the camera app set up, I can go into my meeting, or in my case, back to my meeting, and now when I go into share, I'll go into content from camera, and this is very interesting. So now I go to the whiteboard, and I'm going to share this off. It's going to detect the edges of the whiteboard. So it's going to see if it can find it. Now you'll notice it's using my Surface camera. Let's see what happens when I give it the Logitech camera. So we'll go over to Logitech. It's going to do a much better job of finding that whiteboard. So when it finds that whiteboard, I can now share that. So now I'm sharing the edges of this whiteboard. And what it's going to do is if I get up, you'll notice I'm like a ghost, right? I'm not quite uh, in, in, in focus here, I'm sort of like shadowed. And if I go in and I write on the whiteboard and I do something like, you know, learn every day. So we want to make sure we learn every day, learn something new, and we can have that in there. It's going to see that. And when I come in, notice that it, it's imposed in front of me. So when I put something in front of me, so this is, is quite handy. So I can go in, I'm actually ambidextrous, so I'll just draw with, you know, both hands here and I can say something like, hello. Now you can, of course, have this so that's a little bit more room behind you in it, but it detects it. And now if I go in front of it, I can smile, right? <laughs> it's a little bit of a crowded space in here and it's not the world's biggest whiteboard, but you can see here that it does give me the ability to go in there and we can say make sure that you smile right when you're learning every day uh, this is horrible handwriting here but you do get the idea so it goes in and it recognizes this and if I put my hand in front 
that's on the outside. It can also be used a little bit like a glass board, which is kind of neat. So it's using uh, this feature here. One of the things I can also do that I really like is that I can actually take the whiteboard here and I can take a snapshot of it. So now I've taken a snapshot of that whiteboard and that can be part of my meeting as well. So I'll go in there and then that becomes a snapshot. So if I do go in and I erase this whiteboard, and my family does think it's strange that I have a whiteboard at home, but you know, anything for you guys on YouTube, I want to make sure that everybody's learning every day that I can erase this whiteboard and then I can go in and I can create a new whiteboard and share that out as well. The third way that I can share using content from camera is by sharing live video. Maybe I have a lab surface, I want to point the camera at some circuit boards that I'm working with, or maybe I want to demonstrate some sort of chemistry lab, or maybe I just want to do live video of some event that's occurring. Now in an absolutely perfect world, could you imagine having a classroom where I had multiple cameras and I could just switch between them, one on documents, one on the whiteboard, one on the lab surface? That's a lot of cameras. In my case, I've used just one external camera in order to connect to different setups depending on what I'm doing for that day's lecture. But in this case, let's share some live video and have a look at how that works. Just as we did before, before I do any type of sharing in Teams, I wanna go into the camera on my Surface. And in this case, I'm on the Logitech system. Now you'll notice that the Logitech here, oh, look at this, it's our friend. Now this isn't an octopus that we're gonna dissect. This is actually our classroom pet. So we have a little Pacific octopus, a giant Pacific octopus, that's a classroom pet. But you can see I've got a live video here. This would be great if I was working on something like, uh, you know, doing something with a circuit board, installing a processor into a computer, those types of things. So we have the live video option. Once I've got the camera where I want it to be, again, I can zoom in, I can adjust the focus, I can make sure the camera's exactly where I want it to be move the object to right to the center. Maybe I'm gonna scroll out just a little bit. So this is gonna be my lecture on the giant Pacific octopus that we now have as, as a pet. So I can minimize the camera here. Now when I go to share, I can go into content from camera, this time a video. Again, it's gonna do the front surface camera. I can choose to go to the Logitech camera and this will give me the octopus. And now I can go in, I can share the live video, I can say when you pet an octopus, make sure its tentacles don't get you, things like that. Imagine all the possibilities now that I can share documents, whiteboards, and live video right from a Teams meeting. It's going to be a great feature that I know I'm going to be utilizing quite a bit. I'll post links down below for all of the different uh, hardware that I used in order to put this device together. Say hello to MacGyver, and uh, hopefully you'll set it up. I'd be very interested in hearing in the comments below if you're going to use this feature, if you think a setup like this will work for you, or if you have some sort of environment where you could actually have a, a computer at the front of a classroom with multiple camera setups that you can switch between whiteboard, document, and live. That would be the dream, of course. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.